Since I have been playing a bunch of Frontlines lately and you guys have been absolutely loving Frontlines, I thought it'd be a good time to make a full review on Frontlines. Now, I have done reviews in the past on games where I play the game and then I rate the game based on how long I play it and all that stuff, but this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be all my thoughts put together into a single video so we don't have to go over this ever again. So let's get started. Unlike every other Roblox FPS, Frontlines is a little bit special, because unlike every other FPS, Frontlines has a very realistic graphics. The graphics I would say are comparable to Modern Warfare 2019. And so because of those realistic looking graphics, a lot of new people have been checking this out because it's kind of unbelievable that this game is specifically Roblox. And at the time of writing this, there are 3.3 thousand people playing this game. And this game's only been out for three days. Now, I mention this because very few Roblox games can actually release and pull thousands of players. The only games I can think of are Phantom Forces, Arsenal, Aim Blocks, but then again, those games are very, very big and have been around for a very long time. So this game right here is our first competitor to the big mainstream Roblox games. So does it hold up to all these other Roblox games? The short answer is yes, it does. But this video is more of the long answer. So let's talk about the most important part of any FPS period, gunplay. The gunplay in Frontlines is absolutely amazing. I would say it's comparable to Phantom Forces and gunplay. On release, the time to kill was really, really fast, but then they reduced all the damages for all guns by 15% and reduced the damage rain by 50%. So now you can't beam people across the map instantly. And after playing the game for some time and using these guns, I gotta say the gunplay is an easily 10 out of 10. The change in the time to kill was almost near perfect. SMGs can't one-shot people from across the map. Assault rifles feel amazing at medium range. And as far as I can tell, shotguns aren't that big of an issue. And on the topic of guns, the gun customization is amazing. It's on par with deadlines almost. And instead of having all these guns, you can actually make different gun variants. With the MP5 alone, you can make five different variants of the gun. It being the MP5, the MP5K, MP5SD, MP540, and the MP5357. All of which adding their own unique perspective on the MP5. So if you want to go really short range, then you could probably use the MP5K. But if you want to stay around medium range and also have a silenced gun, you use the MP5SD. And unlocking these attachments are kind of grindy, but it's definitely well worth it if you want to invest yourself into a gun. However, I will say that the credits in this game and buying attachments and all that stuff are a little bit expensive. So I do not recommend whatsoever buying anything unless you really, really, really want it. And the best part about these guns and all that stuff is the fact that like most setups that you use, you don't have to look up the best setup for a gun because most setups just work, period. Recoil in this game is very minimal and it's very easy to use. So once again, gun customization, 10 out of 10. Now let's talk about the maps. As someone who's played a lot of FPS games growing up and all that stuff, maps can make or break how good an FPS is. You could have the best guns engine, the best graphics, the best everything, but if you have bad maps, the game is just not really that fun. Thankfully for this game though, some of the maps actually cook. There's only three of them, but they're all close range maps and they all are very fast paced in your face maps. So there's not really any dead areas, but it's kind of a double edged sword because what I've noticed with this game is that streaking is not really a big thing in this game because everybody spawns so close to each other so quickly that you're in constant combat, which most cases comes down to the fact and who can shoot first. Yes, you can camp in certain areas and spawn camp, but it only works for so long because like I said, it's just too quick. Now there are three maps inside Frontlines, them being Factory, Launch, and Cavalcade. Now Launch and Factory, amazing maps. Factory does have spawn camping issues, but it's probably is going to be fixed within the next week. Launch, amazing map. There's no spawn camping, no none of that. Cavalcade, however, it's kind of iffy. Now there isn't necessarily spawn camping, but the optimizations of the map aren't really that good. So out of all the maps, that one probably performs the worst. And I just don't really like the map structure in general. There's not really a middle area. It's kind of just play on the sidelines and, you know, kill somebody. So for maps, I'm going to give it an overall 7 out of 10. Now let's talk about the overall gameplay and the amount of content in the game. As I said previously with the gun customizations, there are a few guns. I want to say there's seven guns and you can customize all the guns a pretty decent amount. And there also are perks you can unlock through leveling. As of writing this, however, they have not added the skin system where you can progress with skins and grind those. So overall, even though this game is a pretty massive launch, the gameplay is kind of small. 
but even though the gameplay is kind of small, it does take a reasonable amount of time to level up. Which I honestly really don't mind because it gives you enough time to fully play with the gun before you move on to the next one. Granted, when you start, you have the MP5 and then quickly after you have the M4, but after that it takes like 10 levels to get to the next gun. So you really have enough time to play with the gun, use all the attachments on it, make the best setup that you can possible, and then move on to the next gun, which is amazing. So for hours of content, I would probably say you can probably grind this game for at least 20, 30 hours before you start having almost everything in the game. So for gameplay, I'm going to give it a solid 8.5 out of 10 because, you know, obviously things are still being added to the game, so it's not necessarily ready just yet. So a game as a whole, what would I rate it? I would rate this game a solid 9 out of 10. And for a game on launch, that's pretty damn good, especially nowadays where games don't even launch fully completed and they're all usually half buggy messes. But this game, not really. And as of writing this, I actually got distracted a few times and this recording actually took way longer than it is supposed to because I ended up playing the game and then forgetting about my recording. That's how good this game is. Very few games can make me stop being productive when trying to be productive about that certain game. So let me know down in the comments, what are your overall thoughts with this game? And what do you think about my review? Because this is kind of like my first one. So if you guys could give me some pointers in the comments about what I did wrong, what I did right, that would be amazing. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys have been enjoying all the Frontlines content because there's plenty more to come, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.